Welcome back everyone to the channel. Tonight's terrifying story is about a group of campers that were in the state of Washington heading south through Oregon to get back to Los Angeles, California. When a guy that works at the gas station recommends this small off the beaten path camping location, they decide what the hell we're already in Oregon. Let's check it out. And when they get there, they park and they go on this little mini adventure. They come across this mysterious mailbox in the middle of the forest, but it wasn't just letters that they found inside. Now let's get spooky. Editor's note. A few months ago, my friend Keelan sent me this email. He went back out there a few weeks ago and never returned. I tried showing the police, but they said this was clearly a joke and that Keelan's disappearance happens, unfortunately, pretty frequently, particularly when inexperienced hikers go off trail like this. Keelan was not an inexperienced hiker, and I have to believe this story has something to do with his disappearance. My apologies for the formatting. I'm trying to emulate Keenan's email as accurately as possible. Hey everyone. So I know this is going to sound nuts, but recently, some friends and I went hiking and stumbled across something weird, and I was wondering if anyone had any advice. I mean, it could be a prank, but it also sort of sounds like someone's in trouble and I don't know if I should call someone. But who would I call? The police? They probably wouldn't have enough to go on. I don't know. Let me explain, and you guys can tell me what you think. Well, last weekend, a couple of friends and I were hiking in the woods. We're pretty solid outdoors people, and we had gone ahead and strayed from the beaten path. I know, I know, this sounds really stereotypical so far, but bear with me, okay? I swear, this is 100% true. Also, we had GPS, so it wasn't a big deal. Let me tell you about the area we were hiking in. It's a relatively flat area. Not a huge attraction to campers or hikers, in part because there's only one completely straight path through it. No real scenery. It's just outside of Medford, Oregon. Editor's note. We live in Los Angeles. It's not well maintained either because it's not really a park. Just a piece of land that's been overlooked for a long time. You go into the woods and you come out on the other side and that's it. Maybe calling it woods is a bit much because honestly, the whole forest is probably only between 16 and 20 acres. Enough to explore, but not really to really get lost in. Little developments are all around it too. I don't know why the city hasn't developed this particular piece of land. Maybe because the ground is so rocky. The trees are ancient, with scarred bark and huge canopies of leaves that make it so that it's always shady but the floor of the woods is all rock and dead stuff. Branches, leaves, and maybe once in a while, a single wilting tuft of grass. We are just passing through the area, coming home from a way bigger camping trip up in Washington and traveling south on 99, but we thought it would be fun to explore the local areas. A guy at the gas station had mentioned this particular little area and given us directions to get there. And since he had dreads and forgot to charge us for the cliff bars we were buying, we decided to try it. Now that you know how boring and small it actually was, you could imagine why we were wandering off the path and looking for adventure. The temperature up in Medford in March hovers just above freezing in the day. So we were looking for a wide enough clearing to pitch our tents and build a fire before the sun set and the temperature dropped. The woods were old growth, 
really dense. So dense that you could easily lose each other if you wander even a few yards. Plus, the canopy above us made it seem darker, since we were always in the shade. We had already ended up playing Marco Polo more than a few times, and with night falling, we were eager to settle down around a fire. Looking back on it, the woods seemed unusually quiet, as if all the birds and squirrels had already gone to sleep for the night, even though the sun was barely touching the horizon. We were quiet too, hungry and tired and getting a little discouraged. But maybe I'm just remembering it like that because of what we found. It started with one of my friends, John yelling, Guys, guys, you have to come see this, hurry! We all ran towards his voice. I was thinking that he either found the perfect camping spot or maybe one of those weird rare finds like a dead buck with his antlers still intact, or someone's old lean-to. What he found was... was weirder. I crashed through the dead, thorny bushes and found him. He was standing there, staring at it. In the middle of the woods, a mailbox. Just sitting there, in the woods. I know it doesn't sound dramatic, but you have to understand, this was about a six-hour hike away from the trail in the middle of the woods. And the mailbox was the kind that you see at the end of someone's driveway just hanging out. Black metal rusted beyond belief, its little red flag still pointing up, a cobweb crowning it like a wispy little flag. Tarnished metal numbers on the side of the box read, 2676. And even weirder, there was a ring of stones around the post of the mailbox, and a circle of cement. Leaves had blown into it, but you could still see the old, cracked cement that had been poured into the stone circle. It wouldn't have looked out of place at all at the end of a driveway, maybe just outside a picket fence. But this was in the middle of the woods. Who the hell would have even been able to drag a bag of cement a bag of rocks, a heavy wooden post, and a numbered mailbox into the woods. Then put it all together and just leave it there. What's the point of that? Did you open it? That was my first question. John shook his head and gave the little door a yank, but it was rusted shut. He played with the little red flag whose squeak echoed through the darkening woods every time he moved it up and down. The cobweb got on his hand and he shook it off. Then, with newfound determination, John slung off his pack and grabbed the door again. He put his foot against the post and yanked. This time, he managed to open it. What's in there? We all asked in unison. I was hoping for a bottle of whiskey, or at least something interesting. Like a bag of fool's gold, or a weird memorial to someone. But what was in there was way weirder. Letters. Just letters. In the mailbox, in the middle of nowhere. And I don't mean notes that campers had left. There was real white letters yellowed with age with an address and a return address and even stamps on the corner. One of the envelopes was blue and addressed to the local electric company. There were a total of nine. Naturally, we had to read them. We set up our tents right there next to the mailbox, even though there was barely room amongst the trees. We agreed to set up camp before we opened up the letters. By the time we got around to it, the sun had set and it was dark. We gathered up to the fire, wrapped in our sleeping bags and began to open the letters. And what we found established an identity, a life, a person. It seemed way too real to be a prank is what I'm saying. There was an honest to God check in the electric company letter along with a stub of a bill for the amount of $42.38. There was a $5 note in a birthday card to Brandon, 
and the card had a cartoon dog on it that said, You're the best grandson. And there was a pointlessly long and slightly boring letter to Rep. Wes Cooley in which it was stated that he had lost a vote after some scandal about Korea. As a vet myself, I don't appreciate having my service trivialized, and neither would my neighbors or the rest of the proud Americans here in the state of Oregon. And what's more, the check, the letters, all of them were dated in 1996. The electric letter and the birthday card had gone out in early May, and the letter to Rep. Cooley had gone out the very next day. After that, there was a lull, followed by the following six letters. Every single one had the same address. Mr. Max Henderson, 2676, Osprey Woods Private Drive, Medford, Oregon, 97504. I'll transcribe the most relevant parts here, not in the order in which we opened them, but in the order they were dated. I'm sorry in advance for the racist parts, but I'm just writing down what they said. The last letter in the bunch had the word URGENT scrawled across the envelope in red. The Letters May 18th, 1996 To whom it may concern, I have lived at 2676 Osprey Woods Private Drive for 23 years now and you folks have always done a fine job of taking care of my little road. I'm very pleased with where my tax dollars have been going, locally anyway. But this year I think you boys missed a spot. When I was posting a letter to my grandson earlier last week, I noticed a bunch of weeds growing up around my box, and even coming out around the gravel. Now I know that you don't do weeds, but you've always maintained the side of the road. And when I say weeds, I don't mean the tall grass or the wildflowers, but a real mess. Shoot, there's even a little maple growing up a couple feet away. I am an old man and I live alone, and I cannot fix this sort of thing as easily as when I was younger, so I was hoping you might be able to do something. If the woods are creeping up on my box, then sure as shooting, they're creeping up on your road. I guess the rain this year must be helping them along because you'll see an ivy-looking vine getting over on my box, and it's reaching out onto the road too. I tried pulling it off, but those climbing things put up a real fight. I hope you understand it takes a lot for me to admit that I am not as young or strong as I used to be and I wouldn't ask this of you unless I thought it was a real problem. Thank you for your service. Cordially, Max Henderson May 20th, 1996 Dear Henry, Well, sir, I got your letter but haven't yet gotten around to replying. Hopefully by the time you get this, Ethel will be feeling better. If I know Ethel, she's probably already out dancing now and bugging you about that water heater of yours. It's too bad about that Made in China crap they've got in all the stores now. Remember when you picked up something at the store and it said Made in China, and you'd put it back and get the ones with the flag on them? Now it's all cheap chow mein junk at every damned Walmart you look into. Me, I haven't been out recently. I guess I'm getting old, Henry, because I tell you, all these days walking down to the mailbox takes a lot longer. When Beth and I first moved in, I could sprint around the bend and get there and back in less than 10 minutes. But two days ago, it took me damn near an hour, and you ought to see the way the mailbox looks. I sure do wish Jake hadn't gone out the Michigan, but you know for Melinda's ass, I wouldn't have to. I posted a letter to the Department of County Roads, and I reckon they might be able to help me out a bit though, at least where my driveway meets the road. The weed's grown up where their gravel meets my driveway and it's starting to look really wild. But I'm not giving yet. I might just go out there and spread some salt or something to control the growth, 
or I'll get some of that roundup if the weather warms up a bit. Now you know I'm only saying all this to you because you know how it is when you have to start asking for help with your own house, and every piss and vinegar kid thinks he knows better than you. I haven't neglected this drive in 23 years, and I hate to see it get this way. Maybe Ethel could make some suggestions about weed control. I know she plants those red flowers every year over the curb. Well, better get going. I don't want you to waste these golden years reading my life story. Say hi to Hank for me, and let him know that Brandon's turning five on Friday. Cordially, Max. May 24th, 1996. Dear Henry, Well, I don't know when you will be getting this letter because nothing I've posted all week has gone out. My mailman is a chink and I bet he's on vacation or something. I wish they would have told me because if my bills get in late, I sure as hell won't pay the fees for it. I haven't had a late bill in 23 years and I don't plan to have one now. Now, I don't mean to bug you, but you're the truest friend and we saw a lot of things together in 52, so I need your advice. And please be honest with me and don't spare my feelings about this. I'm not fooling around. Remember that problem I mentioned to you in my last letter about my weeds in my driveway? Well, it's a hell of a lot worse than I expected. The weeds had grown up real bad. Not just weeds, but real dense bushes blackberries, and saplings. A line of them between the driveway and the road. I nearly broke a hip checking the box this morning because I had to step over them, and the drive is all covered in weeds. I don't know how they grew up so fast, but if the Department of County Roads doesn't hurry, I won't have a driveway anymore. But that's not the thing I wanted to tell you about. I'm just stalling because my mind's going and I don't want to end up like Ella did at the home with a bunch of snot-nosed kids wiping my ass for me. Well, here it goes. My driveway is getting longer. I don't mean that I feel like it's longer. I mean it really is longer. Maybe the county came around and did some work on it and I didn't notice. And all that turned up soil is why the weeds are growing so fast. But see, when I checked the mail a few days ago, I told you how it seemed longer to get there. Well, my drive curves around and you can't see the mailbox from the house. So I decided to see how long it took and I'm not imagining it. It takes a long time, longer than it did last week even. So then I thought I'd measure it with my tape measure. Why not? I haven't got much else to do since I retired. And I went out and got it from the shed. And today my driveway was a good quarter mile long. You might say it curves and I measured wrong with the straight tape, but I'm pretty handy with tools. And Henry, you know damned well I couldn't mismeasure an entire quarter mile. Now the other possibility is that there's a couple of deer trails and curves and maybe I made a wrong turn on my own driveway and took a path and thought it was my drive but I don't think I'm that old yet. I've lived here over two decades and I've never made that mistake since the very first year we moved in. If you follow the curve, you get to the road, no discussion, and I know I did follow that curve. So what do you think, Henry? Am I losing my marbles? Roads don't grow until your taxes go up, and I don't think I mismeasured or got lost on my own property. But hell, maybe I did. You ever heard of anything like that? Cordially, Max Henderson. May 30th, 1996. Addressed only to pranksters. To whoever moved my mailbox. Please put it back. I was young once too, and I sure did a lot of dumb things, but this is going too far. I don't know how you did it, but making an old man wander around in the woods on his own property is sick, and what's more, it's illegal. I could sue you for trespassing as well as harassment, and tampering with my possessions, and I will. 
Thank you kindly to stop bothering me and put my mailbox back on the road so I could pay my bills and receive my mail. I could have fallen and then you would be charged with manslaughter too. You have had your fun and done a very good job fixing the road and the box in the woods like this, but the playtime is over. Please respect an old veteran and return my mailbox and I will forget about this very juvenile prank. Max Henderson June 2nd, 1996 Dear Jacob Son, I don't know if you will get this, but it's time for me to leave the home. I know I said never, ever, until I'm cold and stiff, but I don't think I'm well, and who knows, maybe I could get a pretty nurse. Joking aside, please come immediately if you get this. I am in terrible danger from myself. The last couple of weeks when I leave the house, the world seems very confusing. My driveway has gotten longer and it curves more and more, and yesterday when I came out it curved all around like a circle and I came back to home. Today I even went out into the woods to find the road and I swear it's gone, and I was lucky because the mailbox is still there. But it's in the curve now, not at the end. I think I'm going crazy. Maybe because of the drugs I smoked in the 70s. But everyone did some foolish things back then, and I really am losing my mind. My house and my mailbox are opposite to each other, and my drive is on a big dirt circle in the middle of the woods and I can't find the road. I fired up the old Geo and drove around and I swear it, son. The road's gone, and I feel like a mouse in a maze. But the maze is just a circle with no way out. It's completely closed and does not connect to the road anymore. Maybe the road's disappeared, or maybe I have, but wherever I am, I'm not where I was before and I think I'm trapped here. None of my letters get sent out, but if I'm crazy, maybe they do. Maybe I'm having some sort of crazy flashback and I'm going to think I'm in Korea tomorrow. Anyways, I think you get the gist of it. I need you to come over now and we'll settle this thing straight together. Maybe I have one of those brain tumors or had a stroke. I don't know and I don't even care to know. I just want my drive to go back to a curve, not a circle. No more woods. A good view from the road and mail that comes every day. I haven't gotten a thing in the mail for over a month. Maybe I did and I don't remember. I sure don't think I have though. I'm trying not to sound like a crazy old fool, but I must be because how a road can just be a circle and get like that in a couple of weeks is the damn stupidest thing I had ever thought up. Love, Dad. June 5th, 1996. Dear Henry, This is the last letter you might ever get from me. I have been trapped in my house for weeks and weeks now without communication from the outside world. I don't have any food left. I ate the last of it yesterday, around four. And as I write this, it's noon, and I could hear my stomach growling. Well, sir, it looks like you beat me, just like you always said you would. I hope that if you find this letter before they find me, you will have pity on me and check up and make sure I have not lost my dignity. I don't want them to find me like some crazy old man with my pants down around my ankles or anything. Please make sure Jake doesn't have to see nothing like that. I want to tell you about my last days on this earth. I think I've really lost it. Well, you know how it is. They say your mind is the first to go. All those weeds grew up on the box and then over the driveway and it keeps getting longer. But I figured, well, my knees are getting older and by the time I noticed, it was too late. The driveway started ending at the mailbox and there was no road, just the woods. And they got thicker and you couldn't see the road. And by the time I tried to walk out, I realized I was trapped. It happened that quick, Henry. Then the bend got sharper, longer, but I never saw it lengthen. 
It was just longer every time, and soon you could go all the way around like it was a circle. I tried it all, Hen. I might be nutsy, but I fought the good fight. I shouted. I climbed up on the roof. And just woods as far as you could see. I went out even at my age, and I found a stream and I followed up, and guess what? It was a circle too. It's like being trapped at the bottom of a bowl. I can't get out. I'm going to starve. I might get desperate and make a break for it, but I've already tried that and no matter where I walk I keep coming across my own driveway. And I tried using compasses, tried following the sun, tried the stream. I must be out of my mind hen because this isn't right. But I've made my peace with God and I guess that this is it. Who knows, maybe I'm sane after all, and these woods are going to eat up my house and my drive too, and they'll never find us again. But I sure do hope so. And I'm posting this as my very last attempt. Please, if you get this, please send help. Come get me. And this is not a joke. But I've been waiting and the letters just sit. Maybe you'll never find them. Well, Henry, maybe someday you will. All my love to Jake, Melinda, and Brandon. It was an honor to serve with you, sir, and send Ethel my love too, as well as Rachel, Dorothy, Hank, Ginny, Louie, and Sammy. The will I drew up last year with Jake is the one I want you to use, and please, no fighting. But one thing, please. Call me a superstitious old crackpot, but no one gets the house. Not now. Not the property either. It can go to the state or the county or even the Chinese for all I care. But my family ought to stay in Michigan and live good, long, happy Christian lives and never fall into this circle. This goddamned never-ending circle that keeps on taking me back. And please take care of them for as long as you live. Well, sir, that is all about I have to say. And may God have mercy on my soul. I sure do hope that you find this, but I won't post anymore because these woods are playing tricks on me and the letters just sit there anyways. At peace and maybe with Beth now. Max Henderson When we were done reading them, we just sat there. It was cold, yeah, but it could have been August and we still would have had goosebumps. This shit seems so real. We joked and laughed a little, quietly, but ended up going into our tents and passing out after a while. It was just way too intense. The next morning, we figured it was a joke, but for shits and giggles, went looking for the old man Henderson's place, as we called it. Obviously, we didn't find it. We just went wandering around all day. Then we went back to try to find the mailbox, but we couldn't. And we know how to use compasses, you know? Our GPS wasn't working because John forgot to charge the batteries. Again. When we stumbled back onto the trail, an overgrown packed dirt path, I swear it curved, and the guy at the gas station said it went in a straight line the whole way through. Someone made a crack about us finding the spooky circle path, and we all laughed. But oh my god. I was glad when the path straightened and we got out of the woods and back into the car. I still got all the letters. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have even bothered typing this all out because the whole thing is so unbelievable. And I never thought to take a picture of the mailbox. I know, I know, I should have, right? I mean, maybe it's just a prank. But the letters are all real, dated, handwritten aged, faded, and what about the check and the addresses and the stuff like the $5 and the birthday card? That seemed just too authentic, you know? And how the hell did a mailbox post end up in the woods? None of it adds up and it makes no sense as a prank. No one had touched that thing since 1996 and I swear, and the chances of anyone finding it ever again are slim to none. 
It's not even funny, just creepy and sad. So my question is, what the hell am I supposed to do now? I want to go back there, but no one else seems to want to come with me. No one seems to even care. But what if old man Henderson's lying dead in that woods somewhere, lost in his own closed-off circular driveway? Or did he and his house really disappear, leaving nothing behind but a mailbox rusting in the middle of the woods?